Listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. Intrigued, Clemens contacted Morteza Grieb, aeronautics professor at the California Institute of Technology. He was fascinated by the idea. Coming from Iran, I have a keen interest in Middle Eastern science, he says. He too was puzzled by the picture that had sparked Clement's interest. The object in the sky apparently had wings far too short and wide for a bird. The possibility certainly existed that it was a kite, he says, and since he needed a summer project for his student Emilio Graf, investigating the possibility of using kites as heavy lifters seemed like a good idea. The wind was blowing at a gentle 16 to 20 kilometers an hour, little more than half what they thought would be needed. What they had failed to reckon with was what happened when the kite was open. There was a huge initial force, five times larger than the steady state force, Grieb says. This jerk meant that kites could lift huge weights, Grieb realized. Even a 300-ton column could have been lifted to the vertical with 40 or so men, and four or five sails. So Clemens was right. The pyramid builders could have used kites to lift massive stones into place. Whether they actually did is another matter, Grieb says. There are no pictures showing the construction of the pyramids, so, there is no way to tell what really happened. To sum up, learning is affected by emotions of both the individual and significant others. Positive emotions facilitate the creative aspects of earning and negative emotions inhibit it. Fear, for example, can limit the development of curiosity, which is a strong force in scientific advance because it motivates problem-solving behavior. In Bokert's 1991 Review of Emotion the Learning of Very High IQ and Highly Achieving Children, she found emotional forces in harness. They were not only curious, but often had a strong desire to control their environment improve their learning efficiency and increase their own learning resources. All jumping spiders have large eyes that look like binocular lenses, and they function pretty much the same way. Most jumping spiders locate their prey visually and then jump and capture from 1 centimeter to over 10 centimeters away. Only a few species of jumping spiders invade the webs of other spiders, and the Portia spider is among them. Jumping spiders, including Portia spiders, prey on insects and other arthropods by stalking. Sometimes the spiders lure their victims by vibrating the web to mimic the struggles of a trapped insect. Others feel there is more of a case for the theory. Harnessing the wind would not have been a problem for accomplished sailors like the Egyptians. And they are known to have used wooden pulleys, which could have been made strong enough to bear the weight of massive blocks of stone. In addition, there is some physical evidence that the ancient Egyptians were interested in flight. A wooden artifact found on the steppe pyramid at Saqqara looks uncannily like a modern glider, although it dates from several hundred years after the building of the pyramids. Its sophistication suggests that the Egyptians might have been developing ideas of flight for a long time. The loss of helium on Earth would affect society greatly, defying the perception of it as a novelty substance for parties and gimmicks. The element actually has many vital applications in society. Probably the most well-known commercial usage is in airships and blimps, non-flammable helium, replaced hydrogen as the lifting gas to jour after the Hindenburg catastrophe in 1932, during which an airship burst into flames and crashed to the ground killing some passengers and crew. But helium is also instrumental in deep sea diving, where it is blended with nitrogen to mitigate the dangers of inhaling ordinary air under high pressure, as a cleaning agent for rocket engines. It appears that experimental, situational, and cultural factors are even more powerful in shaping wisdom than previously imagined, says Associate Professor Igor Grossman of the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. Recent empirical findings from cognitive, developmental, social, 
and personality psychology cumulatively suggest that people's ability to reason wisely varies dramatically across experimental and situational contexts. Understanding the role of such contextual factors offers unique insights into understanding wisdom in daily life, as well as how it can be enhanced and taught. For many people, a long way in our everyday lives, we have to perform many acts out of habit to survive, like opening the door, shaving, getting dressed, walking to work, and so on. If this were not the case, we would, in all probability, become mentally unhinged. So strongly ingrained are our habits, though this varies from person to person, that sometimes when a conscious effort is made to be creative, automatic response takes over. We may try, for example, to walk to work following a different route, but end up on our usual path. By then it is too late to go back and change our minds. Another day, perhaps. The same applies to all other areas of our lives. When we are solving problems, for example, we may seek different answers, but, often as not, find ourselves walking along the same well-trodden paths. The first hydroelectric power plants were much more dependable and efficient than the plants of the day that were fired by fossil fuels. This led to a rise in the number of small to medium, sized hydroelectric generating plants located wherever there was an adequate supply of falling water and a need for electricity. As demand for electricity soared in the middle years of the 20th century and the effectiveness of coal and oil power plants improved, small hydro plants became less popular. The majority of new hydroelectric developments were focused on giant mega projects. Like, share, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates.